family as they make preparation to fu funeralize his sister on Wednesday at the 14th Avenue Baptist Church. Visitation with the families from 11 to 12, and the funeral will start at 12. And I've heard that Brother Richardson funeral is also on the same day at the same time at World Outreach. So let us be in prayer for those families and let them know that God is able to bring them through. Amen. So let us keep them in prayer and we pray for all of you, my father's children and I want to give my wife a shout out for her birthday. Amen. 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 My grandson, as well as myself and others who are born in the month of March, you have been doing an extraordinary job in preparing breakfast. But they told me to tell you, it all good things has to come to an end. Amen. So next Sunday, don't expect it. They want to be dressed up in their what? April coming. Uh, they want to be dressed up. They want to be greasy stuff on there. <laughs> outfits so they will have donuts and juice and cornflakes. Amen. Frosted flakes possibly. Amen. But we want to thank them for the great job they do and we hope in April we'll step up to the plate. Amen. Sister Cornell and Lily and others, amen, Rose, amen, they're going to be on it, amen, God bless you. Amen, and obviously when you have the mic, you have some certain amount of control, so I want to take this time, since I had a mic, and say, if anyone need any tickets, I have. <laughs> and he know who I'm talking to. <laughs> but uh, are you ready for the word? Yeah! Are you really ready for the word? Yeah! Well, you will raise your right hand to the pulpit and repeat after me. It's a pastor cyber. Pastor Cyber, preach to me. Pastor Cyber, preach to me. And I will be obedient to the word. Amen. The next next two songs that our choir bring us, and after that, the next voice you will hear will be none other than our great pastor. And our love pastor, Pastor Richard Cyber. Amen.
for you deserve all this and more. So I give you more, more. So I give you more.
I know over the past couple of weeks, me and this microphone have been entertaining, to say the least. But y'all need to know, I've been going through some stuff. And God has told me I'm going to overcome every single bit of it. I know it. I have been defeating it. And you know how I've been defeating it? With my praise. You've heard preachers say it a thousand times, a thousand radio sermons, a thousand Sundays. But praise, it stops the enemy dead in his tracks. He thinks he's got it figured out. He'll quote the scripture to you. He'll tell you what he, you think you are. He'll accuse you. But when you start to praise God, he don't know what to do. He is bound immediately. I'm telling you, y'all, healing, delivery, prosperity, I'll say it a million times. You know, the Word of God says, for the man who orders his speech rightly, I will show my salvation. Well, what do you think that is? You think that's mumbling and complaining? No. Praise. That's the only a right speech. God told me a long time ago, I don't want to hear nothing but thank you from you. You, you know, you're going to have needs. You're going to have struggles. All I need to hear from you is thank you. And I held it for a little while, but I've been going through it. I want to tell you, you got to praise. And you know why you got to praise? It's because our God is worthy of praise. He's an incredible God. And I just, I just try him. You're going to have to to get through this life because it's going to get worse. You can't be sleeping on God no more. You can't be letting the devil run you any which way. You need to tell him where to go. And you need to claim what God has given you every single day since he shed his blood on that cross thousands of years ago. Because he's an incredible God and he deserves incredible praise. And I've had, I've had some problems, some great and some small. But you being God delivered me from the mob and I still can't believe all the ways you yeah, yeah. I gotta say an incredible God deserves incredible praise and it'll mess the devil up let me tell you and that's what I'm here to do now I'm here to mess the devil up. I want to make him mad every single day. He's been messing with me. It's time for me to mess with him. Because I've had, sing it. But you being God. And I still can't believe all the Oh, yeah, an incredible God, Jesus, incredible praise. Clap your hands before the Lord. Oh, I believe we could sing it one more time. Talk about how God's got us through. Cause I've had, yeah. 
But you be an almighty God. Each and every single one, I still can't believe. All the ways you've been. Oh, yeah, yeah. An incredible God. Oh, what kind of God would do this for me? Victory, grace, and mercy. He is so special, simply incredible, so incredible, an incredible God. What type of God? What type of God would do this? Victory, grace, and mercy. He's so special, y'all. Simply incredible. So incredible. An incredible God. Jesus. Sing to the Lord. Oh. 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 Yeah. You know, you ain't got to praise him with your words. You could just say, oh, we better do it. Say, oh, oh. He's so incredible, just got to say it. Oh, 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 oh. We got to give him praise. Incredible. Incredible. Praise. Praise. Incredible. Incredible. Praise. Praise. Incredible. Incredible. Praise. Praise. Yeah. Praise. He deserves. Because he's a healer. He's a keeper. Lord, we love you. He's incredible. He's a healer. He's a keeper. He's healer. Oh, he's incredible. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we love you. He's incredible. He's incredible. He's incredible. He's incredible. He's Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you up in here. Lord, we love you. Because he's incredible. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we love you. He's incredible. Break it down. He's incredible. He's incredible. He's incredible. Our God is incredible. He's incredible. A wonder working God. Lord, we love you today. Because He's incredible. He's a healer. He's a keeper. He's a breaker of addiction. Because He's incredible. He'll heal the broken family, He'll give you a word. He'll keep you safe. Because he's incredible. He's incredible. Oh, he's incredible. He's incredible. Hey. An incredible God. Jesus. Incredible praise. Hey, hey. Lord, I will lift you up every day of my life, for I will die without it. Thank you, God. Whoa, whoa. Amen.
We serve awesome and incredible God who love our praise. We want to thank this choir. Come on, let's give them some love. And musician for doing an outstanding job uh, ministering to us through song. Amen. To these preachers, some of God's best, and to the officers, deaconess, ushers, and all of you, my father's children, it's just a blessing to be on God's wake-up call again this morning. It's something that I don't take lightly. It's good to be here. There's a word that comes to us from the ninth chapter of the book of Matthews, starting at the 16th verse and concluding with the 17th verse. When you found this, please stand on your feet in reverence to God's word. It says, neither do men put new wine, no, I'm sorry, no man put a piece, a new garment unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up takes from the garment and rent it is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles or else the bottle break and the wine runneth out and the bottle perish but they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved. You may be seated in the presence of God. I want to preach from the thought the point of no return. For we come too far to turn around. History will tell us back in the early 1500s a Spanish conqueror by the name of Hermandas Cortez and 500 of his soldiers landed on the shores of Veracruz, Mexico. One of the strongholds of the Artec people. As Cortez prepared his 500 men for battle, he noticed that they were terrified by the number of Artes people that they would face during the battle of Vera Cruz. As he reflected, church, upon their situation out of the rearview mirror of despair that the, that the old world had to offer, he also looked out of the windshield of possibilities. Okay. He realized that what was behind them was their history, and what was before them was a mystery. He had come to the conclusion that what was ahead was better than what was behind them, 
and retreat wasn't an option. So he tells his men to burn the ships. He was ruining Brother Preachers the possibility of retreating. Cortez had reached the point of no return. Let me land this a little closer. Now, if I were a betting man, I would bet that all of us at one time or another have been there and done that. In fact, by the expression on some of your faces, I would hasten to say that some of you are there right now. I think I need to say this, that your arrival at that state of mind, Brother Vaughn, isn't all bad. However, the problem arises, although you have come to this point of no return and want to go back, but you have become stagnant. In other words, you are afraid to go forward, so you stay stuck where you are. a little closer. You want to embrace the sunshine of a new day, but you still want to chill out in the shadows of tradition. You want the space of a brand new house, but you want the payment of a bed, one bedroom apartment. You want the convenience of marriage, but you want the freedom of the single life. You want the bragging rights of owning your own business, but you want the comfort of a steady paycheck. Am I bringing it a little closer? You say you want the newness of a 21st century ministry, but you still want to do things the old way. You say you want to catch hip-hop fish, but you still want to use gospel pearl bait. Some of you missed that. You want the future, but you don't want to let go of the past. Like Cortez men, we are afraid to burn the ships. Let me say this before some of you take it the wrong way. I'm not saying that we don't need the old way or we are to totally do away with the past. Because if you don't remember where you come from, you can lose sight of where you're going. Allow me to say it like this. Anyone who has ever driven a car know that the windshield is larger than the rear view mirror. That's just common sense. This suggests to me that the automobile manufacturer understood that you need to see more of what's in front of you than what's behind you. Are you still with me? However, the rear view mirror is provided so that you'll be able to take an occasional glance at where you have been to get a proper perspective of where you're going. I know you caught that. I need to look forward because that's where I'm going. But every now and then, when things get rough and ridiculous, I can look back 
in the rearview mirror of my life and I begin to think things over, I can see that my future is bigger than my failure and realize how far the Lord has brought me. Have he brought you? I ought to have one witness in the house today. Church, there's a difference in allowing your past to inform you and allowing your past to imprison you. Have you ever been at the point in your life that you were sick and tired of being sick and tired? You're not sure about what's around the corner, but you hope that it's better than what has been. Whether you know it or not, you have been to the point of no return. Let me land just a little closer. When your marriage has lost its um, mm -hmm, and it has become boring, and sometimes you want to throw in the towel. Now, it don't mean that you don't love the person that you're with, but things have become stagnant, and you want that fire to be huh? re-kindled. Am I right about it? What you say, Tommy? Oh. Or when you are single and your single lifestyle that puts you in the position of needing some freshness. I'm talking about a new boo in your life, you're at the point of no return. Still not close enough? Let me zoom in once more time. Even in the church, you can reach the point of no return. You're tired of the same old song. You're tired of the same old players. You're tired of playing the same old game seeing the same old folks at the same old meeting, asking the same old question, arguing over the same old stuff with the same old shout while trying to hide the same old sin. I need to ask you, have you been to the point of no return? In our text, Jesus impart a story, Albert, which say you never put new wine into old wineskin because during the fermentation process, the yeast would cause the wine to expand and to the soft animal skin become hard. In other words, by the time the new wine was ready, it had become old wine and the new wine skin that had been soft had become old skin that has now become hardened. And by squeezing the contents, you can enjoy the fruit of the vine. Now, I want you to know, I'm not talking about Mad Dog 20 or Red Arch Rose. Whatever it is, you know what I'm talking about. Or Thunderbird. Thunderbird. What's the price? What's the price? Four to twice. I'm talking about that good stuff. Are you with me? There are two things in our text that Jesus wants every believer to know. Number one, the new wine is going through what science calls a state of metamorphosis. Okay. All right. It is becoming something it's not by using what it already has. The new wine is going through the process of becoming. Someone missed their shout right there. I said it is going through the process of becoming. And whether you know it or not, all of us are going through the process of becoming. 
though you may not be what you ought to be, but thank God you're not what you used to be. And the Lord has brought you a mighty long way. Folks that used to make you mad and keep you upset can't get to you anymore. Now, I want you to know, I'm speaking of myself, I come a long way, but don't push me too hard. I ain't quite there yet. Like the new wine, I am still in the process of becoming. God is still working on me. I think Albertina Walker said, be patient with me. God ain't finished with me yet. Another thing, Denise, I love about new wine, no matter how hard you try to contain it, because of the yeast, the yeast factor in it, it's going to expand until it become what it should be, and then burst out of its container. And for those of us who are in the house who want to become like new wine, we got something on the inside of us that we didn't put there, God put there, that make us want to keep rising until we become what the Lord would have us to be. No matter how hard life of folks try to knock you down, praise will get you back up. I said incredible praise will get you back up. When folks talk about you, just keep on praising the Lord. When folks lie on you, just keep on praising the Lord. When folks try to destroy you, just keep on praising the Lord. I declare you, when you've been torn down, knocked down, drugged down, praise will get you back up. I said praise will get you back up. How many of us know that praise, I said praise, real praise, Holy Ghost praise, will raise you out of the depths of despair and put your feet on solid ground. If you want God to bless you, just try praising him. Just tell him, Lord, here I am. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to know that God prays. His incredible praise will stand me up when folks knock me down. I said it will stand me up when folks try to knock you down. Jesus told this parable so they would understand that some things you just contain. You just can't contain. And when you got praise on the inside of you, it's going to burst out on the outside. And you got to tell somebody how good God has been to you. Have God been good to you? Well, why don't you praise him? I said, why don't you praise him? He's worthy to be praised. Is he worthy to be praised? Give God some praise. Let's stand on our feet and say, Lord, I thank you. I'm not begging you for nothing right now. I just want to thank you for bringing me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for bringing me and keeping me. Thank you, God. The door of the church is open. He's a keeper. You ought to come. There's no safer place than in the will of God. Isn't it?